Hi class and welcome to our new segment called Problem Solving and Programming. Now in the text you can find it in chapter 10 looking at problem solving and programming design. Our objectives for this class will be to define what is a problem, also to define what is a solution, and lastly we want to define what is problem solving. We want to be able to list the steps in problem solving. And lastly, we want to create what is called an IPO chart. Now, everyone has problems. We hear everyone saying, I have a problem, I have a problem, but what is a problem? Your text defines a problem as a discrepancy between what is required and what exists. Notice the discrepancy means that there's a difference, what you have and what you actually need to get done. Now problems can be either simple or complex, meaning for example, a simple problem will have usually one main task that you want to accomplish, whereas a complex problem would have many tasks that you want to accomplish. The example that we have here of a simple problem, we for example may want to find the average of a set of integers. We want to calculate tax payable. We want to compute the surface of a perimeter, surface area, sorry, and perimeter. We want to compute tax and discount, or we may want to generate a list of prime numbers. Notice that all of these problems only involve one main task that you're trying to accomplish. Now we have more complex problems, such as in in our day-to-day -day running, we may want to perform what's called a linear search. For example, searching for an ID number in a list of ID numbers. Notice you would have so many ID numbers that you would have to sort through. You may also want to determine which person qualifies for something based on a particular criteria. For example, we may want to determine if a person qualifies for house benefits based on their incomes and expenses. Or we may want to determine the winning candidate for a constituency in the national elections. Notice that these problems would require more steps or require many tasks to be able to complete them or to solve them. These are more complex problems. Now, for every problem, there is a solution. What is a solution? A solution is a procedure consisting of a set of instructions that if you follow them in order, will achieve your desired results. So let's put, for example, I am thirsty, that is my problem. What would be my solution then? A simple solution would be to get myself something to drink. Now, how did I get from being thirsty to getting something to drink? The thought process that we go through is called problem solving. All right? It requires a critical analysis of the situation, which would be your problem, and a careful consideration of the possible ways to overcome your problem. So a problem can have many solutions, but you then must decide through problem solving which one of these solutions would be best to solve your problem. Now, it is described as having five steps in the problem-solving situation. First, you want to define the problem. Come up to an understanding of what is my actual problem. Next, you want to propose analysis, propose and analyze solutions that you may have. Next, you determine which one of the solutions that you have determined are most efficient and then you develop and represent an algorithm and you test and validate that your solution guaranteed solved your problem. Now let's run through these steps. Step one, define the problem. The aim of this is to understand the problem. You start with a description of the problem in narrative form. Hmm. Right now, what am I feeling? I'm feeling thirsty. We then develop what is called an IPO chart, which we'll look a little bit later on, 
and we use this chart to break down the problem into parts. Next, what needs to be done to solve the problem is determined during this step. Step number two, propose and analyze solutions. Consider alternative solutions to the problem. Analyze each proposed solution. My problem is I am thirsty. Now what are some solutions? I can drink milk. I can drink juice. I can drink tea. I can drink water. Now which one of these would be the best solution then? And that's when you get to step number three. Determine the most efficient solution. This step, this step sorry, evaluates the solutions developed in the previous step and determines which one is most efficient. I may decide to quench my thirst. I may need a glass of juice right now. Now, step four. We said that for step number four, we want to develop and represent the algorithm. Algorithms may be developed using a combination of sequential, conditional, and what are called looping statements. And these we'll look at a little bit further on. Al algorithms may be represented using what are called pseudocodes or a flowchart. Step number five, the final step. And this step is very important and some people tend to overlook this step. You want to test and validate your solution. This is the final step in the design process. Your pseudocode or flowchart is tested for correctness using what is called a trace table. If the algorithm produces correct results for a set of carefully selected test data, then the design is deemed to be valid and the program implementation may be commenced. Notice at this point, we're no longer talking about orange juice here. We're talking about steps when we're developing a program for a computer, all right? When you're working with different, in a business, you may find that you have different issues that arise. And that's what computers are here for. We use them to help make our lives easier. We can develop different programs that, are help, that will help us to get from a problem to a solution. Now, we said earlier on that one of the objectives that we want to accomplish is to create what is called an IPO chart. Now, what does IPO stand for? IPO is a term that you may have heard in your first or second form classes, which stands for input, processing, and output. A computer is a device that takes input and stores it, processes it, and then returns output. Now, let's look at the first stage of the input processing output, or IPO for short, process. Input. Input is data that you will need in order to calculate or solve a problem. Sometimes the inputs are obvious from the problem statement. For example, it may say, enter the prices of three items. Sometimes the inputs are not so obvious. If this is the case, think about what data would have to be entered in order to solve the problem. For example, calculate the total prices of three items. The inputs in this case are the prices of the three items. Look for words such as read or enter to help identify possible inputs. Now, the second step is the processing stage. In this stage, we want to look at the processing statement, which tells you what needs to be done to solve the problem. You may be asked to choose, repeat an instruction, or compare or convert values. These are examples that processing is required. For example, let's look at this problem that we have here. It said, add the marks received for a test out of 100 for one student. If the total is 50 marks or over, display the word pass. If the total is under 50, display the word fail. Repeat for student two. 
The word add, if and repeat in this problem indicates processing instructions. Words such as calculate, work out, and find are also good indicators of processing statements. So let's look at this problem again. We notice that we need to add the marks. That's our first processing. We said that if the total is above 50, we want to see the word pass. So that's another indication that some processing needs to take place. And also, when this is done, repeat for student number two. That's another processing statement. Now, what then is my output? Output statements contain the solution or the end results that you require. The example used in the processing section requires three outputs. Total, the word passed, or the word failed. Note the other words to determine output would be print, display, and show. Now, what is the actual IPO table? This is a table that shows your input, your processing steps, and the related output of a particular problem. Notice what do I need to put in to solve this problem? What needs to get done? And what is my solution? Input is what is requested or given. Your processing is all the instructions that must be executed to transform the data into information. And lastly, output is the expected result. If I type A on this, my keyboard, what do I expect to see on my screen? I should be expecting to see the letter A. Let's work through an example of creating IPO tables. The example that we have here is that we want to develop an IPO table that will add the weight of two persons to show a total weight. What are the inputs? What processing needs to get done? And then finally, what is the output? Now I want to see the output being the total weight. So let's see how we would create an IPO table to show this. It says that the inputs would be the weight of person one and the weight of person two, because I need this in order to get the total weight. How do I find the total weight? I have the weight of person one plus the weight of person two. And that then gives me my output, which would be this total weight. Let's try another example. Create an IPO table that will collect three prices, compute their average, and output a result. So what, it, what are my mm -hmm. inputs? What processing needs to take place? And what then would be my output? The answer that we have here, the inputs are the three prices. What are we going to do with these three prices? We're going to find their average, and that is the processing. I will take the price one, add it to price two, and add it to price three. The total of these should be divided by three, since it's three prices, and that will give me my output, which is the average. Now let's see if you guys can try example number three. Create an IPO table that will read three numbers and find and display their product. Now I'm going to ask you to pause the video at this point so that you can grab paper, pen, and create your IPO table. Remember you want to have what is your input, what is your processing, and what is your output. Now I hope that you've paused the video now let's look at the answer. Now notice here we want to find product. And a product is, of course, in math, we determine the product to be a multiple. Uh, when we're, we use product to refer to multiplication. Now, it says that we had three numbers. So that is our input. We have number one, number two, and number three. 
The processing that happens is to find the product of these three numbers. So I'm going to multiply number one by number two by number three. And this gives me the output, which is the product. Now let's try the same for problem number four. Again, please ensure you pause the video to try to create the IPO table on your own. You will need to create IPO an IPO table for the exercise given on Thursday. It says here, create an IPO table. Read to read two numbers and compute their sum, compute their product, and compute their difference. Notice for this particular example, you're going to have multiple outputs. Again, pause the video, attempt the IPO table, and then we'll look at the solution in a bit. Now let's look at the solution for this problem. The input, it says that we had two numbers, so that would be my input. However, I must perform three actions. I must perform the sum, I also want to perform the product and I want to calculate the difference. How do I find the sum of these numbers? I add them together and that will give me the output of the sum. If I want to find the product, I will multiply number one by number two to find the product. And to find the difference, I will subtract number two from number one to find the difference of that problem. No. What did we learn today? We were able to define what was a problem, and we also defined what, were so, what was a solution. And we said the process where we go from a problem to a solution is called problem solving. We looked at the five steps in problem solving, and we are also able to create what are called IPO charts. Now, I hope that you will review the special this segment on IPO chart creation as there will be an activity on Thursday. And that's when you get to step number three. Determine the most efficient solution. This step, this step sorry, evaluates the solutions developed in the previous step and determines which one is most efficient. 